Good afternoon again. It's a beautiful day here in early autumn and uh, things are sunny and beautiful. And uh, we wanted to do another series here. Uh, this is entitled uh, Why Objects Fall to the Ground, the Physics Part 2, uh, with measurement examples of how plasma vortex make gravity, understanding how implosive charge collapse causes gravity, examples uh, implosive charge collapse in the atomic table, many graphics, and the same implosive charge collapse in the geometry of how DNA gets a soul by that same vortex implosion. So we wanted to do more graphics in this series, Why Objects Fall to the Ground, the Physics Part 2. <clears throat> so first, a review of Part 1. Uh, essentially what we said was, if you look at the graphic here of our publication, uh, <clears throat> The physics publications we have on this are all at fractalfield.com slash conjugate gravity. And specifically, I'm referring to the example we discussed in our video part one. Uh, my new equation for the radii of hydrogen, Planck here, multiplied by integer exponents of golden ratio, produce very exact three radii of hydrogen, which proves this picture on the right here is actually how hydrogen is assembled, which is the smoking gun that proves how the implosive charge collapse causes gravity in the fractality of hydrogen, now proven by my equation. Specifically, that as the waves approach center on that spiral of the golden mean, they add and multiply phase velocities recursively, constructively, as only allowed by golden ratio. And when phase velocities add recursively, constructively, constructive heterodyning, that turns compression of charge into acceleration of charge toward center, the adding and multiplying of phase velocities. As the charge is then accelerated in fractal compression toward center, that acceleration of charge toward center due to fractal conjugation is named the gravity. And the proof that we then by that solved Einstein's dilemma of infinite non-destructive charge collapse is where then the charge doth go when it passes through center, which is that compressional wave is accelerated through the speed of light precisely at the Planck threshold. Let's change the scale on this to see it better. So that down that perfected 60 degree implosive vortex cone, the transverse electromagnetic wave inertia is converted in the name for golden spiral in hydrodynamics and physics is called optimized translation of vorticity. And the inertia is translated from the up and down transverse critically at specifically and only the Planck threshold into the compressional or longitudinal EMF named gravity waves. And that propagating uh, longitudinal wave reaches the compression necessary to propagate at the velocities which are multiple golden ratio multiples times the speed of light, as measured by Professor Raymond Chow, who saw the velocities faster than light are almost always between 1.5 and 1.7 times c the speed of light, meaning the golden ratio times the speed of light is evidently the smoking gun, again, proof of this cause of gravity. And that, those faster than light phase velocities then begin to explain the physics of stargates and portals and wormholes. And in fact, this then explains better than physics' current conventional language, which says that um, uh, nesting or uh, 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 essentially embeddability that enables the Einstein bridge wormhole. We now know that embeddability perfected, that nesting perfected, is the problem solved by golden ratio. So when physics says that these wormholes are created by nesting and embeddability, what they mean is that golden ratio phase conjugation enables the creation of the longitudinal wave in the wave distribution geometry, which is specifically fractal golden ratio, which is the gravity grid, which introduces our next conversation here, which is a review of Gurdjieff's uh, exhortation that we understand why it is that planets and stars experience gravity relations erotically. So essentially we have this standing wave dodeci cosa, think the star mother kit, you know, the, the dodeci cosa geometry. This is the geometry of the nodal array required for interchanging inertia with longitudinal EMF, which is obviously the definition of sacred space and the only possible 3D fractal. We call this the star mother kit. 
And in that array, then, the approach to those high leverage compressional still points, sometimes called sacred space, or for example, where Earth magnetic line crosses create decreased in radioactive critical mass, as was measured by uh, Bruce Cathy, and um, explaining why focused human attention also reduces radioactive critical mass, because focused human attention has been measured by Bill Tiller to compress charge. And we're the first to explain why focused human attention compresses charge, because it is specifically electrically implosive like this. So, now do we understand better why Gurdjieff says planets and stars experience gravity relations erotically? <laughs> we go to this uh, slideshow, Longitudinal Compressed, slide number 97. And just some visuals for kind of review of last time before we move on to the atomic table section as implosive charge collapse and DNA. So, uh, effectively, uh, at Spira Solaris, spirasolaris.ca, they did a great job of documenting the fingerprint of golden ratio all over gravity relations, uh, specifically here in the solar system, for example, that the most dominant geometry in all of gravity relations is evidently golden mean ratio, which is obviously means golden ratio means something beyond beauty. It means wave mechanics, in this case, gravity wave mechanics, in this case, how to stabilize gravity, hint how to make it centripetal and therefore negentropic. So since golden ratio's fingerprint is all over gravity relations, this could help us begin to think about what Gurdjieff meant by planets and stars experience gravity relations erotically. What we call feeling is this distribution of charge perfected by longitudinal interferometry, which is why also longitudinal interferometry is the physics of scrying, clairvoyance, remote viewing, all the fun stuff. And so we've talked many times about if you grab a tornado by the throat, in this case a gyroscope, and you nutate precess at the right geometry, you can accelerate that gyroscope. So this explains why the plane of rotation of the solar system versus the, I'm sorry, the planet and Earth versus the solar system versus the galaxy, those three planes of rotation phase couple in a way that uh, uh, creates the necessary implosion named stable gravity. So the phase relationship of zodiacal spin of planetary spin to zodiacal spin, which is really the physics of astrology, is how that compression wave of charge implosion, the longitudinal interferometry, embeds, and embeddability again is, is, the, is the key, uh, local rotations into interstellar rotations. And that embeddability is a problem obviously solved by the golden ratio. And later we're going to look at this. We have how the, the, the platonics nest one inside the other uh, is not only, uh, you know, Kepler's solution to the gravity stability of the solar system was uh, platonic nesting, but we're going to see that is also uh, the solution to atomic table nesting, which is, we're going to look at the physics of why the perfect nest of platonic solids is the perfect nest of charge collapse. That is the point. And that then explains the atomic table and this prediction of, of gravity relations. Uh, here is um, the tetrahedral nodes of uh, Mars uh, and Earth, uh, the tetrahedral latitudes uh, predict the phase and training of local gravity with interstellar gravity. And this, this has to do with how the pyramid as a gravity diode uh, stabilized the formation of atmosphere in, in the advanced material. You all remember Kepler's famous model of all the platonic solids in one nest saying that's how the gravity of the solar system worked. And so later we're going to talk about, or we have talked about our work here with Bill Donovan, all at fractalfield.com slash propulsion, uh, showing examples of vort how Vortex makes gravity. And his book is there in the crystal propulsion section, um, credit to Bill Donovan, Elizabeth Donovan. Now in his book, Glimpses of Epiphany, mostly about Kosky Frost. And this was a, it's a, it's called a rotating conjugator, for example, uh, Fullerenes rotating uh, could make enough gravity and propulsion to make the rest of tech on this planet really the Stone Ages. It's true, and we're getting there uh, later. But point being that the Z helical axis of the quartz 
is a rotating conjugator. So if you put a phase conjugate pump wave, in this case in the Kosky frost crystal, this explains how it made 800 times its own weight in gravity, actually the physics of what was called warp propulsion versus what was called impulse propulsion here is when you uh, fold, uh, well, we have some images here. If you fold a, uh, a spiral on a torus here, and we have some of the equations from, uh, and we credit uh, Martin Jones on this, that we can actually predict what geometry of the spiral on the torus, if you have a liquid or magnetic flux in the spiral accurate on the torus, that vortex will make gravity. And the amount of gravity it will make, we actually have predicted by equation. So many examples of how, uh, a spiral on a vortex, a perfect plasma vortex, why and how it makes gravity and how to perfect the amount of gravity it makes. And um, I guess we could play some of our favorite animations of spirals on vortex. Uh, and most of you have seen these animations. So this is uh, embeddability perfected or nesting perfected, which is the physics of that implosion. So, I think we did uh, 97, 121, 2029. All right, ne next we're going to talk about plasma vortex examples. Slide number 121. <clears throat> this is just to describe uh, our friendship with Hodewanek and Ramsey, who made these measurements here, uh, replacing the million dollar uh, uh, Weber gravity wave <laughs> replacing the billion dollar <laughs> LIGO uh, gravity wave detector. We have here a 25 cent capacitor <laughs> doing a better job of measuring gravity waves. Hello, <laughs> once you know those gravity waves are longitudinal interferometry. In this case, the measurement here is of the time of arrival of a known star explosion arriving here faster than light at Earth and measured in this, <clears throat> it was called a rust track recorder. It's a a capacitive coupling that measures the passage of the longitudinal field, sometimes called a gravity wave. And it's a very good example of a gravity wave detector based on a 25 cent capacitor instead of a billion dollar LIGO detector. Once you know why objects fall to the ground, you can do some things that are actually fun. So we talked about this last time, the arrangement of stellar masses and uh, is dodecahedral and why in the universe and you know why the uh, Townsend Brown effect works that it's again implosive capacitance that corrects the cr creates the directionality and by the way this implosive capacitance does work in a quote unquote vacuum since there's no such thing as a perfect vacuum and we talked about the fact that the jet pillar is basically the charge acceleration the racing of the jet and the Jedi and this is all at our, at our Jedi school dot science link and here's examples of implosive capacitance and some of the early measures we made. And we actually set this up. This is actually a four foot diameter, perfect 60 degree cone on which we set capacitors to implode and make gravity. And then we talked about phase conjugate dielectrics, which are implosive media within which this implosive capacitance can propagate, hence uh, phase conjugate mirrors and scrying and all that fun stuff. So <clears throat> the second half of this conversation will now be about uh, using first the atomic tables platonic symmetrics as an example of proven perfected charge collapse hence extending our idea about okay I newly proved that hydrogen is fractal and I strongly suggest that's the smoking gun for how hydrogen is making gravity uh, by golden ratio phase conjugation now we extend that to the atomic table and then finally, we will move on to how that same implosive capacitance applies to DNA. Uh, so the uh, atomic table section, we go to uh, keynote labeled, keynote uh, sequence labeled full sequence, implosion full sequence. And we move to slide number 22 to 41, other end of this slideshow been doing this for 30 years so we obviously have a few too many slideshows <laughs> uh, but they're fun <laughs> and but here remember in this section we want to look at the platonic nature of electron shell symmetries and understand how and why that's gravity making okay so context we just looked at the fractal nature of hydrogen and powerfully speculated or hypothesized that Golden ratio phase conjugate fractality is the reason hydrogen makes gravity, namely implosive non-destructive charge collapse through the Planck threshold 
through the speed of light, enabling longitudinal propagation, creating gravity waves and the gravity wave grid, which is obviously fractal or dodeca related, golden ratio related. Now we want to extend that example to the platonic nature of the atomic table. So we're saying charge self-similarity, perfected charge collapse because of fractality is the cause and mechanism of the gravity which holds atoms together. And we're extending the conversation from hydrogen to the whole atomic table here. So first we look at, was that, was that an animation? No, good. Okay. I don't want to miss any movies. <laughs> okay. So this is uh, an example uh, of uh, smoke, th smoke ring theory, cymatics, and cymatics being a mechanism to begin to uh, visualize electron shell geometries and charge cloud plasma symmetry relationships. So the primary source for this part of the conversation is from uh, the geometric periodicity of the elements from Lawrence Hecht. Uh, 21st century magazine. This is famous. Now this whole section, the visuals for this section on the platonic implosive charge collapse of the atomic table is all at goldenmean.info slash creation. And you'll see all these images there. So note here, uh, uh, obviously your chemistry teacher might have missed something when uh, they needed to empower you with the visual tools to visualize inside your head what's happening in the atomic table. They should have told you that the atomic table is one simple platonic nest, tetracube dodeci cosine. Then you're done. You got the atomic table. Hello? And that describes both the electron shell symmetries and the nuclear hadron symmetries. Those are the pictures I am going to show you right now. On the bottom here is the famous... Um, platonic nest symmetry from Kepler saying this is how the gravity of the solar system worked. It turns out he was right. This is the picture I was referring to down below from the Keplerian, the, the Keplerian atom, in fact, they called it. Uh, so uh, here we're showing how platonic solids, tetracube, icosadodeca, embed and nest inside one another perfectly. And we're going to apply that to the rigorous, and I do mean rigorous, chemistry of the atomic table. Remember the term chem, as in alchem, means access to a black hole, <laughs> which is what alchemy is, and implosion and fusion is. And so alchem is a good name for chemistry because you need to know why chemistry is alchemic. I mean implosive. I mean charge collapse. And so this is um, first from the very famous chemist Moon at University of Chicago, who showed that the geometry of the hadrons, the protons and neutrons, in the nucleus, here this list of all the platonic nuclei, number of nucle nuclear hadrons, for example, two in helium at the top, and the symmetry they make. So you see that the symmetry, the, the hadrons actually nest in the nucleus is tetra cube octa eicosa. And then you're done. You've got the geometry of the symmetry of the hadrons in the nucleus of the whole atomic table. How? Tetra cube octa eicosa. Then you're done. Remember, tetra octa cube is actually one nest because the Octahedron inside two tetrahedrons, the outside of that is a cube. So tetraocta cube is the same symmetry from the point of view of wave mechanics. So we've, we, we're done with the nucleus. <laughs> what about the electron shell symmetry? So here, remember, when you look at electron shells, and I hope your chemistry teacher was clear enough on this, that the entire atomic table is made simply of inter interdigitation, a weaving of the SPDF sub, they're called suborbitals. So you interdigitate S, SP, SPD, SPDF, then you're done. You got the whole atomic table. So if you know the shape of the SPDF subshells, you suddenly can visualize the shape of every electron shell and therefore all of chemistry. Hello, this is called psychokinetic leverage. If you can visualize accurately, now that we know that your brain is a hologram that can throw tornadoes around, let's throw some tornadoes around in the atom. So here's the S suborbital geometry. You got it. It's a donut. Well, it's a teardrop and a donut, basically. So the S suborbital is clear. It's cool that the... Uh, the pictures on the left will be here from Psi Perception of Quarks, the real first clairvoyant occult chemistry, which later proved to be ahead of conventional atomic chemistry. And so on the right, you have the picture from atomic chemistry. And now we move on to the pi suborbital. Now that we know the S suborbital is just a donut, <laughs> the P, pi suborbital, is tetracubic. In fact, it's sometimes called, you can see that the three electrons pointing out in tetracubic array. So everyone knows in chemistry that the pi suborbital is tetracubic. 
This is the way the clairvoyants saw it here, and on the right is the way current nuclear quantum physics visualizes the pi suborbital. Again, still cubic. But the fun part now is the D and F suborbitals are 10, 14 electrons. Remember, the SPDF is 2, 6, 10, 14 electrons, which as pairs means 1, 3, 5, 7 vortex pairs, or 1, 3, 5, 7 spin symmetry pairs. And a 5, 7 spin symmetry pair making 10, 14 electrons is Dodeki Ikosa. <laughs> and Armand Weiler famously spent half his life proving the 5, 7 spin symmetries pair is Dodeki Ikosa. Uh, you can read on his work on that. And that leads us the conversation about the 5, 7 spin symmetry pairs of the Anu, which is how the cl clairvoyance depicted the heart of the sun, the heart of the human, and the heart of hydrogen. So indeed, now you're done. You've got the entire atomic table's electron shell symmetry by visualizing the S suborbitals, suborbitals of donut, the pi suborbitals of tetra cube. The D and F suborbital are dodeca ecosa, which fit inside each other. So here's just another picture of the S, P, D, F suborbitals, dodeca and ecosa. And another picture from occult chemistry, notate, seeing a little better the tetracubic. And then the octa. And here is the dodeca ecosa. The, we called it the bars and stars subgroup. So the point being that this is, this nesting is how uh, gravity is created. So uh, you need to just final make the point that you cannot put a dodecahedron, the pi suborbital, I'm sorry, you cannot put a cube, the pi suborbital, into the D, the dodeca suborbital, without using golden ratio, because the golden ratio is the way a cube fits in a dodecahedron. Hence, it is proven by inspection that if the cube is fitting inside the dodeca, the P suborbital is fitting the D suborbital, that has to be golden ratio because there's no other way to, for it to fit. And similarly, you can't put a dodeca inside an icosa without making a golden ratio everywhere. So by using the, by definition, golden ratio nesting, which is the only way platonics fit inside one another, hint, star mother kit, golden mean dot info slash kit, it's proven that the nesting of platonics requires golden ratio because there's no way to nest platonics constructively, you can use golden ratio everywhere, meaning golden ratio perfected constructive charge collapse in a platonic nest is the way the atomic table creates the implosive charge collapse named the gravity. Okay, end of section on atomic table visualizations. Next, uh, how DNA creates implosive charge collapse and therefore a soul and therefore gravity. <laughs> Valerie's friend saw her grandmother floating over the ground and she was making gravity in her bliss uh, it, we have we have witnesses I mean this is these are not just stories so if we know that DNA can make some gravity <laughs> and we would like to know how plus it'd be convenient to know how DNA makes a soul so maybe we should look at the pictures <laughs> okay so slide number 216 make sure we get, we get full sequence section right 216 okay so <clears throat> first we're talking about the nature of the idealized implosive cascade, which makes gravity a neg entropy in general. If you take my equation, which we showed in the last film, uh, Planck times integer exponents of golden ratio, and you remember you got the planetary orbitals and the hydrogen orbitals and everything in between. But if you look at the actual frequencies there, which are the frequencies which create implosion and neg entropy, which we use, for example, in Therify.net, creating re rejuvenation in 25 countries, and we also use that in theimploder.com, creating rejuvenated water around the world. So these are the actual frequencies used by Priori and now Therify.net. And you see what they are, 2.78, 4.5, 7.29, 11.8, 19.09, .09, in theory. And then you look down at the bottom, the actual frequencies of the Schumann harmonics, 3 hertz, 7.83, 14.3, and 20.8 by measurement. Look how close the Schumann harmonics is to pure phase conjugate charge implosion. Is that a clue to why Lovelock said Gaia is negentropic? That's the point. So that particular implosion, which we see depicted above in in the charge symmetry of chlorophyll, we, of, of uh, photosynthesis, we talked about last time the two frequencies, photosynthesis being exactly golden ratio to Planck, proving phase conjugate neg entropy is the only reason photosynthesis exists. So now we talk about DNA. So look here at one rung on the ladder of DNA, the center bond 
rung in the ladder of DNA, a hydrogen bond, which is depicted here and here. It's actually the geometry of that bond uh, is, is effectively a golden ratio rectangle. And we know since the hydrogen is the center of every center ladder rung bond in DNA, and now we know newly that hydrogen is fractal, that means the zipper down the ladder of DNA is a perfect implosive lightning bolt. Hint, soul catcher. <laughs> and so if you braid the braid of the braid on the braid, then you get a longer and longer wave of cascade of embedded golden ratio into that lightning zipper, meaning DNA eventually can steer very big tornadoes and make gravity. And we think that's the ensouling moment when bliss braids the DNA. Note that the recursion, the vertical increment of turn, the horizontal increment of turn, the radius of turn, vertical increment of turn is golden ratio, horizontal increment of turn is golden ratio squared, and the radius of the turn is golden ratio cubed. This is from Ann Ting and geometric extensions of consciousness, which is excerpted in this picture. So this is from original Ann Tang. She was wonderful about this. And, and my later pictures, which I created these graphics in color here, I created them myself on the right. However, they were inspired by, to be clear, this picture from Ann Tang, uh, geometric extensions of consciousness. And when I discussed this with her, she said she got this from Coxeter, one of the most famous geometers in history, actually. I think I talked to him once in Canada. Uh, but he's, she, he's saying, here note, the vertical increment of turn, horizontal increment of turn, radius of turn, golden ratio, golden ratio squared, golden ratio cubed. Uh, this is golden ratio cascading, proving the physics, or strongly suggesting the physics of how DNA implodes, and thus becomes negentropic and a gravity maker. And uh, this is uh, uh, here, the progression of those actions. You have a spiral and the spiral vortex nests in a cube and the cube rotates and forms a torus and, the, and then the, the, the uh, rotating uh, cube nested in a torus, which is actually, this should be dodeca here. When you ratchet the dodeca down a helix, you have a slinky and this is spiral lattice cobweb, spiral tunnel lattice, lattice cobweb tunnel spiral, which is the four geometrics seen in the map to successful dying, the Heinrich Cluve form constants, all suggested here in DMA, DNA geometrics. So here is the measurement famously Glenn Ryan did at my suggestion, uh, showing that I, with the onset of coherent EKG, which I showed HeartMath how to do this right here, and we got this coherent EKG power spectra on the left, we got this change in the amount of enzyme corresponding to the zipper, the braid density in DNA, meaning when you have bliss radiating coherent EKG and you feel it rush, your DNA measurably electrically braids more densely. The plot thickens and that centripetal force you add to your DNA by the long wave phonon coherence of coherent emotion is how DNA implodes and gets a soul. That's the point. That's why you need bliss in order to <laughs> do all the fun stuff like emerge from ET parasites and lucid dream and remote view and <laughs> So this is some, all the, the papers on this, uh, and you can find the link there, goldenmean.info slash Rein, R-E-I-N, where I've reprinted some of my work with Glenn Ryan, who kindly made so many of these measurements. So we were supposed to do up to slide 2771. So this is some pictures of the geometry of the cascade that results. Here's the DNA. I'm sorry, here's the EKG coherence on the right, and here's the EEG coherence on the left. And in both cases, it's this kind of cascade, which is harmonic implosion series in the EKG and the EEG, which is the definition of coherent emotion, which is a term that I invented, realheartcoherence.com. You can find the origins of the word heart coherence, which I invented at realheartcoherence.com, along with our biofeedback tools and app. So basically, what happens then? <laughs> what happens then, Dorothy? <laughs> the tornado! <laughs> it's a twister! <laughs> no, that uh, I would turn myself inside out for you, darling, the physics of love and compassion. That embeddability, that nesting, sucks the next bigger tornado into the vortex within a vortex, which is measurably, from the book When Time Breaks Down, the actual picture of the electrical origins of the voltage of the heart's beat. That's the picture, which also happens to be the physics of how perfected compression is the definition of compassion, ability to feel what's outside you, inside you, is recursive turning inside out ness, which is by definition perfected by golden ratio, and thus the braiding, super looping 
perfect nesting, which has been used medically to describe how your heart beat as a wave has to fit your, into your heart weight as a wave, has to fit into heart breath as a wave, has to fit into your day as a wave, and that embeddability or super looping or perfect nesting, which is harmonic conclusiveness and heart rate variability, and medically defines immune health. Measure harmonic conclusiveness and heart rate variability, and you got your first human immune system health measurement. Irving Dardick's famous book, Making Waves, who was a good friend. So this embeddability or compression or nesting of the little wave on the big wave produces this tornado steering principle. And this is from, uh, actually this graphic originally here is from Irving Dardick, and also um, The Healthy Heart is a Fractal Heart by Ari uh, uh, Goldberger. And uh, so this fractal sustainability of, of heart rates also explains then why the big braiding algorithms within DNA, which some geneticists have incorrectly called junk DNA, we now know that it's the spacing that determines the braid recursion phase discipline. Therefore, uh, it's not junk DNA. No, it's a spacer necessary to make the phase discipline work for charge implosion. And that's, so stop calling a junk DNA wrong. Let's see if we have an animation here. I think it's supposed to play. So the, this is point length, area, and volume are conserved along a single contiguous pathway. And this, the braid within the braid that braids. This all will, is at uh, the article on uh, implosion in DNA, which is um, goldenmean.info slash DNA manifesto. And all these graphics and animations are there. And so the primary function of DNA is the production of a coherent implosive electrical field, which is the physics of soul. So once we know the DNA is supposed to create an implosive electric field by perfecting charge collapse, not just gravity making, but in souling, giving you something to take through death, coherent longitudinal interferometry, then, and by the way, that's measurable, heart rate variability as uh, GDV, gas discharge visualization, and measure the coherence of the aura. So once you know the coherence of that aura determines whether you survive death, then by measurement you could make a decision whether or not you wanted a vaccine, for example, or whether you want to go to church, or whether you'd rather eat broccoli than chocolate chip cookies. All of these decisions you could make once you know uh, Kurt Vonnegut sitting down for the breakfast of champions grabs his whiskey and says breakfast of champions and asks the question to the bartender, I believe, what are people for? <laughs> Once you know what are people for, <laughs> you can make something that's immortal. Hello, that's interesting. It defines the body politic, body polis, the, the coherence field. So DNA is a rope within a rope within a rope, a braid within a braid. It's embeddability perfected, nesting perfected, and that implosive compression defines survival. That ability to have bliss makes the aura. And then we have all these medical papers. Beljansky showed cancer DNA is more unwound and less centripetal by measurement than healthy DNA. So you take a measurement, if your DNA is unwinding instead of winding, it's, 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 it's sort of less embedding, if it's unpacking and unwinding, on the average, cancer DNA is less wound, more unwound, and that is unspec. So it is the packing which makes health. But if it's too unpacked, <laughs> Beljansky, measured, that's called cancer. Hello? <laughs> so the braiding algorithm is the difference between life and death. And, that's just... and this was the genome sequencing. Shows that DNA packs itself lightly into a structure. Coherent fractality in DNA alignment doesn't even mention recursive braiding. But the point is that he, he proved, you could pull one thread out and it would never tangle. <laughs> that was the genius here. That this was perfect packing with absolutely no possibility of ent entanglement. <laughs> Interestingly, the <laughs> physicists say entanglement is how you make action at a distance. What they mean is that embedding is how you make longitudinal waves, which is action at a distance. And so I think we have some more of our DNA animations here. You, most of you have seen these animations. Again, all this is at goldenmean.info slash DNA manifesto. So recursive braiding in DNA acts implosively, and that's how you get a soul, and it measurably responds to human bliss, heart coherence, hint, think love. <laughs>
And this is called the magnetic X. So it's a wave within a wave waving. <laughs> the answer lies folded in an envelope. Are you the X generation? <clears throat> this is the Celtic slipknot theory applied to DNA. And this is when DNA braids recursively. It pelastrates, turns inside out. And this is DNA in a donut, measurably toroidal. It's called toroidal DNA. A bunch of wonderful uh, published scientific papers on toroidal DNA. So perfect self-similarity self sets up constructive heterodyning and thus implosive compression and everything we're talking about, about implosion DNA. And this is the early papers on implosion DNA noting all the golden ratio found in DNA helical wrap structures that it, is, it evolves to its healthiest condition. It gets closer and closer right here to golden mean ratio. And that makes the perfect vortex in DNA. And there's a photomicrograph of toroidal DNA on the right. And that toroidal DNA is sometimes called the Lord of the Ring. <laughs> but you see, if your DNA is perfectly imploded, that ring is so implosive that <laughs> Frodo, <laughs> the next, your next move determines the survival of the world because you have the ring. <laughs> and the letters on the side of that ring, oh, they were the sacred ancient alphabet, which are the shadows of the angle of the spiral to make the perfect ring. <laughs> Lord of the Ring, get it? Okay, so this is the seven tetrahedral symmetry axis defining the codifying the codon arrangement within DNA which we know is the physics of the origin of Hebrew golden mean dot info slash DNA ring top-down view of the decagram called DNA this is famous that's not new but this is the, do the dodecahedral nest I don't know if this yeah, that animation will be, you've seen that before but that's the vortex within the vortex containing the dodecahecosa nest of the five cubes in the center and this is Dorothy. No, no. This is Jodie Foster in the movie Contact entering the dodecahedron embeddability and doing the travel to ancestors called the lucid dream, the contact. And this is how that waving works. This is here, specific visual of why you have to have golden ratio here, 0.618 to the edge of this red tetra cube, which is 1.0. So the cube's ratio to the the dodeca here. This is the star mother kit. So specifically here, this tetrahedron here is square root of two, but the cube edge length is 1.0, and the edge length then of this dodeca is 0.618, 1, 1.618, 2.618. .618. That's called the star mother kit. Golden mean dot info slash kit. And Tufan Kuvan is distributing those now. Geometricmodels.com. So looking at the embeddability of the total face dodeca zodiacal. The dodeca with the dodeca of the earth grid. We animate, I animated. I did that actually when I was uh, setting up the media system for Gaia TV. This is a higher res version of what we saw animated last time. Again, perfect implosion, the perfect flame in mind. Okay, so I think hopefully that's a happily ever after. So in summary, if you can visualize, visualize implosive perfect phase conjugate fractal charge collapse, not only can you visualize how all plasma vortex cones become centripetal and negantropic, you can then know why objects fall to the ground, the cause of gravity, and you can also know how DNA gets a soul, and you can see that perfected charge collapse in the platonic symmetries of the atomic table. That's the point. So understand perfected implosive charge collapse. You have the solution to... Uh, alchemy, uh, gravity, uh, life force, uh, propulsion, uh, zero-point energy, uh, how to get a soul, uh, how to get through death, uh, and the list goes on and on and on. Per discovery of perfected compression is probably the solution to almost every great problem science has ever known, urban design, history of computer. It's all about discovery of perfected compression, which is information density, which ultimately is mindfulness. Thank you very much. Dan Winter, fractalfield.com. See you the next time. Next time, next video in this series is going to be about current updates in the exciting extraterrestrial politics. That's going to be the next video. Thank you very much.